Well, it is the FMCG sector which the street anticipates uh, that this time around it will report more of the same as the first quarter itself. Why is that? Well, because, you know, demand conditions, while they are steady, they haven't shown a big change. A big growth is expected only in the second half of this year. Low to mid single digit volume growth is what uh, most of the street is factoring in. EBITDA margins, they may see some expansion and that's largely on account of effective raw material cost management and lower raw material prices as well. But you know what the companies have done, right? They've planned to reinvest the savings coming in from these raw materials, the cross margin expansion into intensifying advertising spends because competitive intensity is high and they need to prop up demand as well. So going forward, monitoring the impact of El Nino and the forthcoming coming festive season demand is something that will be paramount. We have a cheat sheet for a lot of the sector this time around. From the staples, from the updates that have come by, Marico, their domestic revenues have been lower largely because edible oil prices have been less. They have low single digit sort of volume growth, but the EBITDA growth has been in double digit. As far as uh, Godrej is concerned, the volume growth has come in in mid single digit, EBITDA margin expansion as well. Whereas Dabur has seen operating profits grow absolutely in line with the revenues, which means that the gross margin expansion has been entirely ploughed back into advertising itself. So that's about Dabur. But moving on, the discretionary part of the portfolio is doing a lot better. So you do have, you know, uh, you know, names like Titan, you have names like uh, Avenue Supermarts, you have names like Kalyan and Nika, all of them doing extremely well. So it was a lot better in discretionary retail itself, with Titan reporting a jewellery revenue growth of 19%, Carrot Lane, the growth driver, growing at 45%, Kalyan Jewellers, their domestic business grew at 32%, we've seen a rub off on all the other jewellery stocks on account of that as well. DMART's standalone revenue grew by around 18.5% and, and Nika's fashion business has grown in 30s as well. Looking ahead at the street expectations for the second quarter, staples likely to be weak. So we have names like HUL, uh, Asian Paints, as well as Britannia reporting revenues anywhere between 3 to 4 odd percent with, uh, you know, low double digit or mid teen sort of growth coming in in terms of their EBITDA. Asian Paints EBITDA is likely to grow by 45 percent. In terms of revenue growth, only Tata Consumer and Nestle are likely to report near double digit revenue growth with mid teens EBITDA growth. Asian Paints, uh, like I said, will stand out in terms of uh, sharp correction in crude prices and a low base, which means the EBITDA grows upwards of 45%. Also important to monitor the results of Colgate, Jyoti Labs, Imami, as well as Bajaj Consumer, as their outcomes may provide valuable insights into strategic shifts within these companies itself. These have been the standout performers of the last couple of quarters. Additionally, let's also remain vigilant for any commentary on shifts in the demand patterns, competitive forces, and the ever-evolving input cost environment. While FMCG stocks have always traded at a steep premium to the market, it's fair to compare them with their 10-year averages. And as compared to that, most of the stocks are trading at a slight premium or largely in line with their 10-year average valuations.